right, camera is. What was the name of the show or whatever? Reggae to reggae. Reggae to reggae. Yeah. Just say. You want to, what do I say at the top of it? No, I'll just say I'll just say introduce yourself. You don't have to say anything. Okay. All right. Camera. And say welcome to my studio in Kingston, Jamaica, or something like that. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right. Camera rolling and ask the way. Hi, I'm Carlene Davis. Welcome to my recording studio right here in Kingston, Jamaica. All right, Carlene, um, you just sang Praising God, which is a song reminiscent of something else you've sang in the past. Mm -hmm. Why does this song sound so familiar? Why does this song sound so familiar? Because it was one of my biggest hit back in the 80s. Uh, that sold thousands and thousands of copies. It was called Stealing Love on the Side. And that was a song that really took my career right around the world. Um, it was number one in, in America on the, you know, the, the Caribbean charts, in England, in the Caribbean. And, you know, it just opened doors for me. Mm -hmm. So doing it over... Um were you afraid that people would find it strange that you would change up the words of a song to make it more relevant to your current gospel? The thing audience? is, the, um, when, after I recommitted my life to Christ, songs like that didn't appeal to me. I wasn't into singing it, listening to it. But over the years, people kept coming to me and saying, man, I love that song, and even, even, People in Christianity would say, can you do that song for me? I'll go to a concert and I'm going, hello there. No, that message just doesn't appeal to, to me anymore, you know. But recently, um, I was invited to appear in Barbados at a major reggae festival. And I discovered that they were using that song to promote me, even though it was established that was, uh, uh, I was now a gospel singer. So we thought, my God, what are we going to do here? And we felt led to redo the lyrics for that special evening. And of course, when I opened the stage and went into that song, the place blew up. Everyone ran to the stage, you know, ran towards the stage. Because, of course, when, once they heard the drum beat and everything, they thought perhaps I was going to sing. Um, the original, but nevertheless, they thoroughly enjoyed it. And when we came back to Jamaica and said, you know what, let's, let's do something with this. Let us give glory to God. Turn it around so that it becomes relevant in my life and those looking on. Nice, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. That's cool. Um, your experience, you know, being part of reggae dance hall in the 90s, um, you, you've traveled everywhere because of reggae music. What was that experience like seeing people connect to this genre? Well, my experience with reggae music and dance hall started back in, in my earlier years in Canada because I, I migrated from Jamaica as a child to England to join my parents. Um, having, you know, we stayed with our grandparents in those early years and then from England, I moved to Canada. So from England to Canada, I was in, in a sense experiencing um, or experimenting with the music with a little band I had in England called the Toreadors. <laughs> we used to do like the, the bars and stuff, um, the pubs um, on my weekends. Um, of school days, you know. And then when I went to Canada, now it became a full-time thing for me. And there weren't that many reggae acts in Canada. Uh, the occasional Jamaican band would come into Canada, like Toots and the Maytales or Eric Donaldson. And eventually, I put a band together, and we used to tour across Canada and doing the hotels and stuff. And then later on, I met a woman called Babsy Grange, who is presently our Minister of Culture here in Jamaica. But at the time, she, was, she ran a, a, a management and booking agency out of Canada, working with people like Ernest Smith, Leroy Sibbles, and then I came along. And we started mashing up the place, man, you know, 
creating our own sound of reggae music in cold, cold Canada. And it was really cool. And of course, um, people like Bob Marley would come through occasionally. Um, Peter Tosh would come through and we'll be like the opening bands for them. As a matter of fact, police, when they were, the group police out of England, when they were kicking, kicking it up uh, with songs like Beds Too Big Without You and all that, I was like the opening band, um, act for them in Canada. So it was good to have our own sound of reggae. And in, in those days, we used to always come back to Jamaica, record, and then voice in Canada and release it as a Canadian product because we didn't have enough musicians there mm -hmm. and the recording studio that understood our sound, you know. But it was great because we were unique. We stood out because there was just a handful of us doing it. Mm -hmm. At so the time, when you, when you came back to Jamaica, and as we like to say, your boss, yes, you know, you started to tour and really became a, a household name. Well, it was the song Stealing Love that did it, and of course, having done that song, I went back in the studio and recorded an album, it was just simply called Carlene Davis, with songs like Going Down to Paradise, Like Old Friends Do, It Must Be Love, and of course, then came the song. Santa Claus, do you ever come to the ghetto? Well, it was a, a huge Christmas hit, which everybody still loves. I mean, recently, Chronics just did a version of it, so, yeah. Yeah, so what I'm saying is, is now asking is, when you began to not only break out in Jamaica, but internationally, what was that experience like, you know, being <clears throat> able to travel um, and bring your music to different parts of the world. It was it was something I always dreamed about and to, to finally see it happening, you know. Um, as a matter of fact, I was one of the few persons that came back to Jamaica to pursue my music because people used to think it was crazy that, hey, you're now, you're in England, you're in Canada, you'll go to America. Why would you want to come back to Jamaica? But for me, I needed to touch base with my roots because having been away for so long, um, I needed to kind of understand the sound that I felt needed to get out there. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so, so tell me, so, so what, I was, what I'm asking is, tell me some of the countries you've, you've visited, sorry. You've, you've gone to well, through reggae music. Through reggae music, I went places like Japan, many times, um, Germany, um, South America, Mexico, um, Carter, um, what do you call that, Costa Rica, um, of course, England, USA, Canada, the Caribbean, mm. and Singapore, you name it. Yeah. Yeah, so, mm. so what, 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 I guess what I'm asking is also seeing that, like being part of that process, mm -hmm. um, what does that show to you about reggae music itself? That you've gone to all these places, performed with, you know, because of reggae music. What do you think it does to people? Well, I know people love the rhythm. I think the rhythm is what, it's very infectious. And of course, with the message that comes with it. And back in the day, you can imagine um, the, 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 the message that uh, someone like Bob Marley brought. And people like myself, as a female in an industry, which was very few of us was happening at the time. You had people like Marcia Griffiths who had already paved the way and Judy Mowat, um, the eye trees and all of that. And then people like myself coming with a, a slightly different style of reggae because of my experience coming out of um, Canada and, mm -hmm. and England. Um, it, it had like a pop influence to it and people loved it. And, and, and very excited to see the contrast of my music, mm -hmm. you know. Love it, they love it, they love it. And of course, Lovers Rock is a big sound, was a big sound then and still is a big sound in, in, in the reggae genre. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And so, you know, I guess what you're seeing now in the reggae music industry, you're seeing there's a, they call it a reggae revival mm -hmm. that they see happening now. Um, just observing that, what do you think about that? Well, I've always known that the, the potential of, of, of our music is great and huge. And 
you know, when you leave Jamaica is when you realize how big it really is. You know, I mean, nowadays you're able to, um, in the summertime, a slew of Jamaican artists are out there going to all the major festivals to show you that there is a demand for it, you know. And um, I think the potential is here. This young generation that is, is, is now springing up, people like Chronix and like you said, um, um, what's his name again? You mentioned oh. Ibo, Ibo Mar, um, Kabak, Kabaka, Kabaka Pyramid, and uh, a lot of these up and coming artists that are, are, are now building a name for themselves. Definitely there's a resurge of the pure sound of reggae. You know, mm -hmm. there, is a, there is a market for it. People are crying out for, for it. And it is proving itself when you see um, the, the artists that are, are traveling overseas and, and, and collaborating with a lot of the mainstream artists, both in Europe and in the United States. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I think we got some good stuff. Oh, OK. So let's say, so tell me now um, what is happening next. What is happening next for Carlene? Well, I'm in the recording studio as we speak. Take, just taking a break just to do this, um, working on my 11th gospel album. My last um, project came out in 2015, which made it to the Reggae Billboard charts, and I'm really excited about that. So we're getting ready to, to put out a new project come April 2018, and I'm very excited. Some very interesting um, tracks are being done. We're working, we just did a project um, working with the, the, the fabulous, talented Tyrone Downey, which is Bob Marley's keyboardist. Lloyd Parks from Lloyd Parks and We The People, the same bass player that had worked on the song Steel In Love, and he's the one who worked on Praising God. Um, um, single mm -hmm. and so we're very excited we have Dean Fraser in the studio with us and a lot of gospel the gospel um, musicians like Dean um, I'm sorry Dave Green on drums Oth Othney Lewis on on keyboards and um, some of our best um, background vocals are in the mm -hmm. studio with me working on some new ideas yeah nice. yeah and of course, my husband, Tommy Cohen, has been writing his butt off, <laughs> as he loves to do, you know, working on some, some songs that I know you're going you're gonna to be excited to hear. So please listen out for the upcoming album, which will be on the VP Records distribution. So mm -hmm. stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So what I would want her to do is a drop for praising God. A drop. 